So today we're going to talk about LAN automation of the 9300 stack switches for SDA, Software Defined Access. Uh, we'll also look at some of the advanced stack template options we can do, um, in particular how we can do the stack wise power and the stack numbering post LAN automation. Okay, so in this, the toolkit we have, we're going to have DNAC version is 1314, and then we're going to have a stack of 39300 uh, for our lab. Of course, your host, Sirius Sam, that's me. So, let's just dive right in onto DNA Center. So the switch I've already ran through and done a test, of course. Um, it's here already, it's been provisioned, but I've actually just deleted it from the inventory, or actions inventory delete. Um, you can see it's not now an option to delete, because uh, I've already done that. If I hit refresh, it should disappear from the inventory, and uh, refreshing, and there she goes. So that's now gone. However, there is still some configuration present on that box, so we're going to need to wipe this guy before we continue. So I will just do that very quickly, and I'll speed the video up. Uh, this is the template I have for this. I just save it as a template because it's easily accessible for me. Right, I'll leave him to reload in the background. Okay, I can see the device is reloaded and we're now at the initial configuration dialog, which is where we want to be before we start LAN automation. So now I'll jump back across to uh, DNA Center here and then on the on the border node, I'm going to start LAN automation. Um, the, the stack is directly connected to the border node, so provision and then LAN automation. Um, this is just pre-populated from where I put it in before, so this is the site where our device is, this is the board node, this is going to be our primary device, we're not going to bother with the peer device, uh, this is the port that's connected to the devices downstream that we want to run LAN automation against, uh, and then where's the discovered device going to live, what's the IP pool we're going to use for um, LAN automation, we have a LAN automation pool defined, the ISIS. Uh, password will enable multicast. So I'm going to put SDA in here. So what this is saying is any discovered devices, what's going to be the prefix we apply to them. However, I do have a hostname CSV file here. Now, uh, my discovered devices, if they have the matching serials, they should get the hostname we have provisioned in here. Else, it'll fall back and use this. Uh, prefix. So I'm just going to start that. And then again, I'm going to go super fast through this uh, to get to um, where we want to see the LAN automation status showing the discovered device. So I'm just having, to, having a look to see if anything has been configured and I can see here we have the DHCP pool is configured on the border for LAN automation and I can go show IP DHCP bindings to see if anyone's actually been issued an IP address via DHCP and I can see three addresses have been issued out. So hopefully we'll start to see um, the devices appearing. Okay, I can see now we have a device has come in, uh, which is our stack. I put a little S on the end to indicate that's a stack, um, which is good. It's picked up the host name based on the serials we provided. So we've got one in progress. Okay, so now we can see that device is now completed, so we can stop the LAN automation process and that will go and convert um, the device into its final state and give it its layer 3 links and put the uh, final configuration onto that box. Uh, it's worth noting that it was probably about 15 minutes maybe that's passed in time, uh, actual since this process started, so plan accordingly. I mean, this is just one stack of three switches, so if you have many, many stacks of multiple switches, it's gonna take some time. You know, kick that automation job off, maybe go and have lunch and come back and then uh, hopefully fix uh, not too many that may have errored out. Okay, we can see that that is now finished. That's the LAN automation job is complete. So let's go and have a look at the switch. So we jump onto the switch. Uh, this is our, this is not the switch, this is the, the border. Actually, we'll have a look first. Show run section DHCP. We can see that the, uh, the DHCP configuration has been removed from this guy. 
this was our switch here. If we scroll up, we can see some logs. We've got a lot of link up, link down. Um, but we can see we've had some configuration applied. Plug and play discovery is done. Um, and the configuration has been applied successfully to the box. Uh, we can tell this because uh, we're asked for a username. And here we are, we're in. So we'll have a look first at the neighbours, see who we've got. We're looking for the, uh, the border head, BN. Let's look for BN1. Uh, BN1's on gigabit 30.2. We'll do show IP in brief. Uh, exclude unassigned. 302. And I see our, our uplinks have been configured for us. Um, <clears throat> okay, so things to note. I'll look at show switch. This is important. So we can see we've got the active standby and member. And if we yeah. hit, actually, no, if we look on here, if we hit refresh, the switch should now be in our inventory. Uh, da -da 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 -da. This one. And we can see the serial numbers coincide. So we've got this one to this one. So this is our um, primary switch, the first serial number. That's going to be the active switch, um, which is this guy here. The reason I'm highlighting this to you is that I've done this job before and the active switch has been the second serial number and in that case a lot of the time the host name is not properly pushed down this one here and instead the uh, the, the, the prefix we define like the SDA one we did in the example would uh, be pushed instead uh, so ways we can get around this is you can either boot the switch is one at a time, um, with this one being uh, booted first, the one that's is first in this file, uh, or, or you can do some initial configuration and set the active switch that you want. But, um, I suggest uh, it's just to boot them in the order you want them to come up, uh, and then we can use the template. So the next part of the job will be looking at using a template, uh, which I have over here. If I just refresh my template editor screen, you can see I have this uh, test stack template. So what I've done, um, it's a variable saying uh, stack member count. So you ask ask the operator what's the stack count, how many switches are in the stack. If they say they have two, then you know if stack count is under three, if it's two, then we'll set the, the power stacks in line with um, whatever policy you have. So this is for the, the shared power on the back of the switches, uh, stack power. And then it'll go and it'll set their priorities, uh, switch one and switch two's priorities accordingly. Uh, it doesn't matter too much for a two switch stack. Um, and then this goes through this loop. Else, if it's three, then we'll set the power stack uh, um, accordingly, and then we'll set the priorities. Again, in this case, this is important because the middle switch we want to be the um, the active switch or the primary switch. And, and then it becomes more important, so if we start to stack more than uh, four switches, so a stack of four, we can see you can support four in a power stack, in a single power stack, but up to eight in a, in, um, a regular stack. Uh, so if we go over four, then we not start need to start need we need to split the power stack out. So I can got three switches in this power stack, so they're sharing power, and two switches in this power stack. Uh, and again, we've got our active and standby switches in, in the middle of the stack. Um, and that goes on, you know, 6, 7, and 8. So I've gone right up to a possible of uh, if it's 7. Uh, and then if we've got 8 switches in our stack, so in this case, I've got two power stacks. The first four switches are in the first power stack, and the second four switches are in the second power stack. And then we set the priority with the middle two switches being the active and the standby. And then finally, um, with, with power stacking, you also have uh, power priority. So as, as switches lose power, they, these are the ports that are kept up for as long as possible. So you have like high, uh, I think there's medium and there's low. So the low, low priority ports will be... Uh, 
powered off first uh, with the high ones uh, being kept on as long as possible so maybe your IP phones or your access points here so I have a policy here that says you know the last uh, four ports in each switch uh, will be connected to APs and they have a high priority uh, and how I've done this is we've got a, a for each loop so saying for each switch um, in this range so one through to a number and this last number here is going to be derived from what you put in at the top of the template uh, your stack count so if you put in four then the range is going to be four down here uh, and then this will just generate configuration interface gigabit one uh, 044 through 4044 and we can I just run that so you know what that looks like so I've got a, a test here I just E uh, with 3 in my stack and if I run this I can see the configuration generated so I've got one power stack I've got my three priorities and then down here I've got the last four ports on each of the stacks are set for high priority um, this was just a, a first go at this template. You could, uh, by all means, in hindsight, you'd probably put these into a, a similar loop, a for each loop as well, so you could have a similar statement for this, which then generates the, the same configuration. But the net result is the same. So let's go and, uh, and, and push that down um, to the device. So I already have a um, setup and design. I've got a network profile. Uh, I think the profile is this one here, which is assigned to five sites. Yes, it's this guy, England Switch, is an arbitrary name. And in here I've got um, the power stack template, and that's only being applied uh, or, or valid for devices with a tag of stack. Um, because, of course, you don't want to be pushing it down to all your other unstacked regular standalone switches, because it will just error out. So if I go to provision and I'll find my uh, switch, which was this guy here, and then we can just uh, tag the guy, and he's going to be stuck. Uh, without that, the um, the template won't show up. And then we'll just provision him. So if we go provision, provision device, uh, that's his location. Yep, and the advanced configuration. So now it's asking us what is the uh, how many? Uh, what is the, the amount of switches in the stack? Uh, three, as we've discussed, and then we can deploy that. And then we'll deploy that now. Okay, so what's uh, interesting to note is that although this will go and push down that configuration, if we're changing the order of the stacks, so in on the device here, I can see that. Um, this switch here is the active switch. Um, it doesn't actually have the highest priority, but the template we're pushing down now, um, if I just go through it again, we'll be pushing, I think, 15 um, to the one we want to be the master, or what is he going? There he is. So if I hit play and then run that, so we can see, yeah, switch one priority 11, so we've got 11, 15, and 13. That doesn't take effect until you reload the device. Um, once that's finished, we should see... Uh, there we are, 11, 15, and 13. So let's push that configuration down. Um, and also the, uh, the stack power. Just have a look at the stack power. So we've got the power stacks defined as well. So this, this won't take effect until the reload. Um, you could put a reload into the end of this template here. Um, however, if you if you run a reload command right at the very end, um, the, the, uh, the DNA center will lose access to the device and it'll error out, it'll have a timeout, an uh, SSH or Telnet timeout. <laughs> or you could, set, you could set a do reload in um, if you want that to happen at the end of that template. Uh, I, I've just admitted it because it's. Um, I quite like to go and reload the devices manually. Um, know what's happening, um, and when that takes place, so I'll, I'll just make sure it should be saved. Now I've noted before, um, it's not in here. It's interesting. It's not in here. So I'm going to show you this again because it's it's really important. If I go show run, and I include. So what do we push down? We put down switch priority. That's the last thing we pushed. So show run includes switch. So we've got all this this uh, 
switch, well, stack power switch one. If I show startup config, include switch, do you see this is missing? So if I hit reload now, that configuration I just pushed will be lost. And that is because I forgot to do an end in the end of my template. And that end tells the uh, the template it's finished and to do a, uh, a right run. you think that would be baked in by default, but hey. Okay. And there we are. There it is there.